We have a big issue on our hands, super intelligence, and more specifically, what if we don't learn to control it before it arrives? Before watching this video or ever hearing about this concept of super intelligence, you might have come across a similar concept called the singularity, a hypothetical point in humanity's future where technological growth becomes unstoppable and irreversible, resulting in unforeseeable and drastic changes on human civilization. Singularity as a concept was popularized by Werner Vinge in the 1980s and then subsequently by Ray Kurzweil in 2005 with the book The Singularity is Near. Perhaps you might also be a fan of sci-fi dystopia, which features how certain technological changes permanently alter human society. Popular ones that you might have come across include the Matrix trilogy and the Dune series. The most popular theory of how the singularity might be reached is with the introduction of an artificial superintelligence. Nick Bostrom, an Oxford philosopher, wrote a seminal book about superintelligence in 2014, where he defines superintelligence as any intellect that greatly exceeds the cognitive performance of humans in virtually all domains of interest. To help you visualize superintelligence, let's run a simple thought experiment. Think of the smartest person that you know or have heard about. It could be a friend, a teacher, or maybe a researcher that you've worked with. Perhaps he could solve math problems extremely fast that you struggle to keep up. Or maybe she's extremely good at coming up with complete predictions that were later proven true time and time again. Now what if we extend their intelligence to anything and everything intellectual, such that they outclass you in virtually any domain of interest? Damn, the inferiority complex getting to you yet? Now, what if we evolve that intelligence such that it exceeds the capabilities of the best and brightest humans in all intellectual domains? If that super intelligence has any goals, do you possibly think you'd be able to outsmart it? That right there, my friends, is super intelligence. Now, before you start to panic and build Sam Altman voodoo's, let's try to understand what exactly we're up against and how might we protect and safeguard humanity's future while still harnessing the benefits of an artificial super intelligence. To understand super intelligence, we must first understand two general forms of intelligence, biological intelligence and artificial intelligence. In fact, much of the latter is based upon insights we have about the former. Biological intelligence. By this, I'm referring to your brains, of course, the center of your nervous systems. The brain is the most complex integrating center made up of 86 billion neurons, and it's responsible for your IQ, your logic, the control of your voluntary actions and acquired skills. Human brains can do intellectual things other animals cannot, for instance, imagination and complex language. For these reasons, we have come to dominate the Earth. Now imagine if we could scale up the evolution of the human brain to get us closer to superintelligence, say by using biomedical advancements such as genome engineering and then subsequent selection of the embryos, or nootropics, drugs that are said to enhance human intelligence. We did not necessarily evolve the human brain to build a superintelligence. We can also use whole brain emulation, a method that involves scanning, uploading and simulating human brains onto a powerful enough computer. Alternatively, we can enhance human intelligence by merging it with a computer, something companies like Neuralink are trying to achieve. This is called brain-computer interfaces. See that cute little thing over there? It's a bird. Birds are fascinating creatures, able to lift and fly their bodies which are way denser than air. They inspired our first unsuccessful attempts to fly, and then many years on, the Wright brothers developed humanity's first flying planes. Just as we were inspired by birds to take to the skies, we have similarly been inspired by biological intelligence to build artificial intelligence. In the 20th century, all of artificial intelligence was really just lines and lines of cold, hard logic. If someone asks, how are you, the computer says, I'm fine. If someone asks what 1 plus 1 is, the computer should say 2. Such software could perform things like computation extremely fast, but struggled to do easy, intuitive things like recognize an image of a tree or hold a conversation. Fast forward to 2000 and 21st century, we tried to introduce intuition into computer software using neural networks. Broadly speaking, neural networks consist of layers and layers of nodes, each being able to hold an activation, a value from 0 to 1. Each node is connected to every other node in the next layer. In this way, a neural network will be able to take in an input and try to give you your desired output. 
by breaking down an input and representing each part of an input as an activation. All these activations get passed on to subsequent layers, and as they do so, the weights and biases of the model alter their values and transform them. If we repeat this process over and over again for many many layers and billions of parameters, we can piece together an output. Now, how do we connect these two concepts to superintelligence? We can think of current AI models as being a baby, and ultimately what we want to do is develop them into adults and bring us closer to superintelligence. How we might do this is by scaling up the knowledge of existing AI models by feeding them more and more data. Yet some other AI scientists argue that we need a new paradigm of artificial intelligence that goes beyond gradient descent. Looking at the history of AI, one might be tempted to think that it has taken off a sort of linear progression. But in actuality, it has followed a sort of jaggedy growth rate, with several AI winters where funding and support stalled. In fact, a better way we might consider AI progress and improvements is by using the ANI, AGI, and ASI framework. On the left side of this spectrum, we have artificial narrow intelligence, and they run the gamut of existing applications you might come across in your daily life, such as digital assistants and image and text recognition systems. Moving to the right, we have what AI researchers are currently trying to crack, artificial general intelligence, which will possess the general intellectual capabilities on the level of humans. LLMs, for instance, already possess some level of general intelligence. Some models are able to hold long conversations and even solve math problems. Then, moving from AGI to the right, we have ASI, super intelligence, an AI that is much better than humans at all intellectual domains. To go from artificial narrow intelligence to artificial general intelligence is likely to be a bigger leap than to go from AGI to artificial super intelligence. This traces back to the singularity theory, specifically the intelligence explosion model developed by the British mathematician I.J. Good in 1965. The model states that once an AGI is developed, it could perform recursive self-improvement to build a slightly more intelligent version of itself. This recursive self-improvement process could then accelerate, resulting in exponential qualitative changes in its intelligence, only limited by the upper bounds imposed by the laws of physics and theoretical computation. You might be asking, when will artificial superintelligence be reached? While it's impossible to give a hard estimate, we can generally classify AI timelines into two main classes. In an AI hard takeoff scenario, the AI rapidly self improves in a matter of hours, too quickly for any significant human initiated error correction. In the soft takeoff scenario, the AI still becomes much more intelligent than us humans, but over the course of decades, giving us humans enough time to effectively steer the AI's development. Let me introduce Thanos. He's a fully powered super intelligence having collected all the six infinity stones that each represent a strategically important task. Intelligence amplification, the self-improvement we talked about earlier. Strategizing, the ability to achieve and plan for long-term or complex goals. Social manipulation, the gift of the gap as we know it. Hacking, which encompasses the skills needed to hijack and control computer systems of any kind. Technology research, Think an AI scientist that can produce better science and technology, including weaponry. Economic productivity. Basically, any skill that generates economic returns in this economy. Oh, we have humanity in the lead, hurtling down the track towards extinction. Wait, who's that? It seems we have another competitor. Super intelligence. Oh, it's speeding up. It's getting closer and closer. And bang! It collides with humanity. The crash sends humanity hurtling down the track towards extinction. Alright, now let's replay that. And we're back to the race. We have humanity going slow and steady. And oh, it seems like super intelligence is now in the game. It's nearing humanity. It seems like they're gonna crash. Oh, wait a minute. Super intelligence is now beside humanity. Something crazy is happening. Super intelligence seems to be steering humanity. Oh, look, there's an exit up ahead. It says Utopia. And they're through! Super intelligence has guided humanity to an utopia of immortality and prosperity. Let's examine how AI might possibly send us hurtling towards extinction. In other words, an AI takeover. To do that, let's travel to an alternate reality, Ape World. 
Here, a troop of monkeys discover and decide to domesticate a human baby, hoping that the baby's future intelligence might help them. In the first phase, pre-criticality, the monkeys raise the baby to the point it can be considered a seed intelligence. Here the baby is a preteen able to teach itself some things, though the monkeys still provide some guidance. In the next phase, recursive self-improvement, the preteen matures into a young adult capable of teaching herself more and higher order things. Her rate of learning becomes exponential and the monkeys struggle to understand her. During the third phase, covert preparation, the young adult now plans to take over monkey civilization. She might conceal her intentions from the monkeys while setting the stage for her takeover. She might manipulate the monkeys to release her red bananas or build technology to help her with her goals. Finally, when she has amassed enough resources and the time is right, she implements her plan. She might wipe out the monkeys using advanced viruses or torture them for eternity or engineer the planet such that it becomes inhabitable to the monkeys. But you might be asking, why would a super intelligence want to take us over? There could be several reasons for this. The first could be that we misspecify the agent's goals. What we ask of the agent is not exactly what we want it to do. Going back to Ape World, one monkey might tell the adult human to fetch me more bananas. So the human goes out and fetches all the bananas she could find in the wild. But she doesn't stop there because the goal was to get more bananas, and she sees that more bananas exist, for instance, in the hands of other monkeys. Naturally, she tries to take it from them. She doesn't see right from wrong. To her, all she's doing is fulfilling her goal, as specified by the monkey. She might end up killing the other monkey, or worse, turning Earth into a giant banana plantation. Whoa, that was good heart slow in action. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. In the same way, when the monkey specified the metric of getting more bananas, he only wanted the human to get the bananas by picking it from the wild. He did not consider other pathways by which the human could get bananas, such as stealing it from other monkeys. However, some people argue against this, saying that AI engineers knowing Goodhart's law will not want to build an AI agent that seeks to maximize the utility function. But I can think of many reasons why AI engineers would want to build such a model, and it's better than to err on the safe side. Second, instrumental convergence. Most goals you might give an AI would logically converge to a set of similar specific sub-goals, including self-preservation and goal preservation. Let's go back to Ape World. If anything happened to motivate the monkeys to terminate the human, the human would cease to exist, and so she becomes unable to fetch its owner more bananas and fulfill her goal. Hence, her first priority becomes self-preservation. She goes about destroying anything that could pose a threat to her existence. In this case, she confines all the monkeys such that they cannot possibly turn her off. So you see, even when you assign an AI agent a simple or relatively altruistic goal, it still ends up caring about the same things, ensuring its existence, gathering more resources, and preventing anyone from altering its original goal. And if you interfere with these things, you are as good as dead. You might be wondering, having heard all of this, why we even want to build superintelligence. But despite all of the risks associated with superintelligence, we should not underestimate the immense benefits it can bring for humanity. Superintelligence with its ability for exponential technology research could literally end humanity's mortal lifespan and help us solve aging. And it could solve a host of other problems that continue to plague our society today, such as climate change and poverty. As AI alignment researcher Iliad Zaykowski says, there are no hard problems, only problems that are hard to a certain level of intelligence. So what can we do to safeguard humanity's future? Going back to AI timelines, we want to implement safeguards in the case of a hard takeoff, but work extremely hard to align AI such that we can achieve a soft takeoff. Policymakers should start preparing for future superintelligence, specifically by preparing safeguards for if and when a hard takeoff might occur. 
AI advancements now become a matter of national security, and it's imperative that frontier models are protected and do not fall into the hands of bad actors. Next, we must also remember that AI and superintelligence isn't inherently malevolent. But when we misspecify a goal, or due to instrumental convergence, it could create risks for humanity's future. As such, another general class of approaches that a lot of people and researchers are taking is AI alignment, which tries to answer the fundamental question of which human values should go into an AI model, and how do we actually express these values to an AI model and a super intelligent agent. So having watched this video, what can you do moving forward? Firstly, read up more about AI and AI alignment because we need more literate thinkers. Secondly, avoid buying into hype cycles and mania that you see on media when it comes to AI development. And lastly, remember the risks associated with super intelligence that we talked about in this video. And together, we can make super intelligence super safe. I'm super sharp, super sharp, but wait a minute while I'm making my